So we have to begin to focus not only on the gut, I'm not saying ignore it, but focus on how we can use foods to actually regulate cellular metabolism. And you can study the work of Ray Pete Broda Barnes. You can study our work in the Metabolic Blueprint. Or you can work with us one-on-one, -on -one, but at the same time, the goal is to regulate metabolism and not just focus on the gut. You're looking at the body like this instead of like this. The body's a system of systems. Now, if you study the work of Hans Silly, he talked about how when people are stressed, and that could be a million and one things, because everyone has their own pieces of the healing puzzle. But he talked about how when people are stressed, that the most, or the first sign of actually being stressed, or the first couple signs of actually being stressed, or having a sickness, or a disease, or an illness, etc., is actually loss of appetite and constipation. Our cells drive everything. Our cells basically producing energy or not producing energy. Right? Lactic acid, CO2. Which one are you doing? Lactic acid, survival state. You're not going to break down foods. You're going to get constipated. You don't have an appetite because you're running from a lion. You're producing energy. You're going to be able to break down your foods. You're going to have an appetite. You're going to support metabolism. You need the energy to support your daily life, your daily needs. You're going to be able to procreate, etc. It makes a lot of sense. Now, I've talked about this in many of my videos. Optimizing respiration videos. Um, are you healthy video? I always talk about body temperature and pulse based off the work of Broda Barnes. And it was actually introduced to me by the work of AP. That's a great way to see if metabolically what you're doing in your life, how you're living, the foods you're eating are actually working for you. Now there's a science to it. It means a lot. But the bottom line is it's been shown that a low pulse, we could say a low pulse is, I don't know, let's just generalize right now because I don't want to individualize. It's impossible. I don't know you and what you're doing. But let's say low pulse would be like, 40, 50, 60, somewhere in there. And low body temperature, below 37 Celsius or below 98 degrees. It was shown by Hans Selier and Broda Barnes that when you have a low body temperature and pulse, and by the worker AP, or we could say when you're in a hypometabolic state or a hypothyroid state, that not only are the digestive juices and enzymes actually downregulated, but you get a decrease in peristalsis, you get a decrease in motility, which can lead to constipation. Um, this is how the foods are propelled through the GI system. So if you think about it, if you get stool and all these foods stuck in your GI system, that's going to easily overload the detox system and cause hormonal stress. You're going to get a buildup of endotoxin, you're going to get a buildup of estrogen, which I'll talk about. At the same time, absorption of foods through the intestinal wall is actually slowed. So now we're eating all these good quality foods, but we don't know if what we're doing is actually working. We take a temperature and pulse. We're 96 degrees. We have a 50 pulse. Now we know what we're doing is not working. Even though we're eating organic foods according to our whatever food we're eat, uh, plan we're on. So now we actually can't move the food. We can't assimilate the food. We can't digest the food because we're in this survival state. This can lead to many, this can lead to more stress. This is actually going to perpetuate the stress cycle. Moving right along. So it's important to understand our physiology because if we don't, we're not going to really understand what's going on in our body when we feel something, when we feel pain, if we're looking at our body temperature and pulse. What does it mean if I'm 96 degrees? I eat healthy. What does it mean if my pulse is 40? Well, I eat healthy. Well, obviously what you're doing, the ratios of frequencies and the quality of the food isn't enough to meet the demands of your body because you're seeing it in your body temperature and pulse. Now, metabolism is important. I've talked about this in many of my videos, optimizing respiration, part one, two, three, etc. How important foods are for the different nutrients and vitamins and minerals like magnesium and copper, uh, vitamin A, T3, uh, glucose, etc. Our cells use this to produce energy. Our cells need these to convert cholesterol um, into steroidal hormones and into energy production. So if we don't have these, we're going to have high cholesterol which according to Broda Barnes is a marker for hypothyroidism. But at the same time, if we're deficient in any of these, of course, like I mentioned, a vitamin A deficiency can actually be, you know, create the illusion of an estrogen dominance because vitamin A is a precursor to progesterone, so vitamin A is actually anti-estrogenic. Our cells and different enzymes, we've written blogs on this, um, are dependent, the cytochrome oxidase enzyme is actually dependent on red light and copper. We use magnesium in our cell to produce energy. We use sugars. This is why we're a huge component of or proponent of tropical fruits and root vegetables used correctly. And at the same time, 
getting the upregulation of T3. T3 is important to produce energy. Over 90% is converted peripherally in the liver. If you're converting to reverse T3, that's usually a sign of you're not eating enough and you're basically in a hypocortisol state. That's really what it is. You're not eating enough to meet your needs. You're not regulating blood sugar. And cortisol increases the conversion of T4 to reverse T3. But T3 is important to upregulate metabolism. And when you're looking at your body temperature and pulse, there's way more to it. But you're really looking at, is my engine being revved? Am I converting enough T3 or am I not? Now, focusing on the gut, since it's a regulator of metabolism, which is going to direct, is the gut actually going to release enzymes and hydrochloric acid, or am I going to be in a survival state? The most interesting thing, another interesting caveat, is in the gut, or part of the, I should say, the biliary system, part of the detox system, and part of the GA system, we release bile, of course, to break down fats and absorb them. We break them down into mycelles. Um, but these bile acids are actually kind of, I, I guess we could say synthesized or made from um, cholesterol. And just like our cells need T3 to actually produce energy, just like you need glucose and selenium in the liver, which they're dependent on to produce T3, just as the cells of your thymus and your immune system are dependent on sugar, there's a fly, and your thyroid regulates the thymus, which is dependent on glucose, you actually need... T3, and as I mentioned, vitamin A, and this is based off the work of Ray P. You actually need vitamin A, which is antiestrogenic, because it's a precursor to progesterone. It's used in the cell to produce steroidal hormones and energy production. I did a YouTube on this, the importance of vitamin A. But you actually need T3 and vitamin A to increase the conversion of your bile acids into cholesterol, which is important. Cholesterol is a, the largest antioxidant in your body. It's a precursor to your steroidal hormones, and you can, can't convert it without T3. So you actually need T3 to help with bile acid synthesis, to help with breaking down fats and things like that and absorbing them. So you need them in the gut. You actually need cholesterol and T3 to make your steroidal hormones to help regulate blood sugar, blood pressure, and fight stress and inflammation. So it's super important. It plays a huge role, not only in metabolism, but in the GI system. Now, I've talked about many times, and we talk about this in depth in the Metabolic Blueprint, how estrogen dominance, which can be estrogen dominance, it can be low progesterone, it can be the body's inability to detoxify estrogen, it could be from taking the birth control pill, it could be from not eating enough protein, it could be eating from too much protein, it could be a vitamin A deficiency, Many reasons for being estrogen dominant. But estrogen actually causes supersaturation of the bile. It actually, when people have these low or hypometabolic states as we cause them, it can actually cause a slowing of the production of bile acids because we're T3 deficient. Um, so estrogen can be a cause in the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Estrogen can be a factor not only in affecting metabolism at the cell level because it affects how our body converts T4 to T3, and it wastes glucose, but actually has a profound effect on the GI system. It actually accumulates. When we have a low metabolic rate, or we're not eating the right types of uh, anti-inflammatory protein, estrogen actually can accumulate. And this is why Ray Pete recommends people using a raw carrot or a bamboo shoots throughout the day with their foods, because it can actually increase the absorption of estrogen and endotoxin. But PUFAs as well, unsaturated fats, have a similar like action um, of estrogen in the body. And they actually stimulate aromatase enzyme, which actually overloads the liver. So instead of taking supplements, let's just eliminate PUFAs. Now back to my little tangent here, or I guess the path that I'm on, because I'm on a roll right now. I'm just going for it. So when it comes to estrogen, if we're not taking in the right types of proteins, our liver needs estrogen to detoxify. Um, our liver needs proteins, non-inflammatory, to actually detoxify estrogen, but not too many of them. At the same time, if we're not regulating blood sugar, anytime insulin goes up, estrogen goes up. This is a hallmark sign of PCOS with women. Estrogen wastes B6 through prolactin, estrogen wastes glucose, etc. But if we get a stimulation of estrogen and insulin, a lot of times we're not regulating blood sugar. And we from that or before that, we're actually getting a hyperadrenaline hypocortisol state. And I've talked about this in many of my YouTubes. When we're not regulating blood sugar, our body says, well, you need to live. I'm going to release adrenaline to try to mobilize glycogen from the liver or muscles if there is any. There usually isn't because we're not eating enough food. We're not eating good frequencies, etc. So then 
we bring in cortisol. Cortisol is brought in because it's a glucocorticoid because we're not storing enough glycogen and we're not taking in the right types of carbohydrates. The problem is if we correlate things like serotonin, estrogen, endotoxin, cortisol to the gut from not regulating blood sugar or regulating metabolism, cortisol actually plays a huge role in regulating. It actually regulates secretory IgA or immunoglobulins in the gut. But in excess, it actually downregulates secretory IgA or SIGA. So cortisol regulates when it's balanced with other hormones, part of the immune system in the gut. But in excess, it actually downregulates secretory IgA and can put you in an immune suppressive state. Cortisol inhibits digestion and inhibits absorption and inhibits peristalsis. You're in a survival state. The body wants safety and security. It wants to regulate metabolism. You're running from a lion. And at the same time, cortisol through gluconeogenesis breaks down muscle tissue, you know, proteins and fats to increase glucose. But the problem is that's catabolic. So it increases free fatty acids in the blood, which is basically uh, antagonistic to cellular energy production. It causes the liberation of tryptophan from our muscle tissues, which is converted to serotonin, which I'll talk about, which is another stress of the body. It causes the um, liberation of polyunsaturated fatty acids from our tissues, uh, which perpetuates the stress cycle because they're leached into the body and into the blood. And all these things can actually cause GI irritation and GI inflammation. Now, if we go to, and there's more information in this in our program, I'm kind of trying to give it to you in a nutshell here.